How does the thief on the cross fit into your theology? No baptism, no communion, no confirmation, no speaking in tongues, no mission trip, no volunteerism, no church clothes. He couldn't even bend his knees to pray. He didn't say the sinner's prayer and among other things, he was a thief. Jesus didn't take away his pain, heal his body or smite the scoffers. Yet it was a thief who walked into heaven the same hour as Jesus simply by believing. He had nothing more to offer other than his belief that Jesus was who he said he was. No spin from brilliant theologians, no ego or arrogance, no shiny lights, no skinny jeans, no crafty words, no haze machine, donuts, coffee in the entrance, just a naked dying man on a cross. And I will even fold his hands to pray. This is a um, piece of literature that was floating around on social media. And I would like to just give a few, few thoughts on it. It's it's become very popular and shared so many times. I think that it brings about a a good point in that the there is a simplicity in the gospel of the thief on the cross who had nothing to offer God. He hadn't done anything for God or his kingdom. Yet Christ still had mercy and forgiveness for him there as he expressed faith in the Messiah because it was his faith in that he was the Christ, he was the Messiah that saved the thief on that in his last moments on his deathbed, if you will. And there is a beauty in that simplicity of the gospel, which I think is worth meditating on. There is another side of this, however, that I would like to address. What is really interesting, though, is while the gospel is simple, at the same time, God calls us also into deeper things. So while the thief did not undergo a baptism, he did not need to because he did participate in the crucifixion of Christ. Baptism is to die with Christ and be raised again. The thief on the cross did die with Christ and will be resurrected one day as well to live with Christ. He didn't necessarily need baptism in the way that we think of it today, because while well, he did partake with Christ in the baptism into death, the other things mentioned, communion, confirmation, speaking in tongues, mission trips, volunteerism, church clothes, and, and so forth and so forth, brilliant theologians and so forth. You know, some of the things mentioned in this is profitable. Some of them are less profitable. However, I think that there is something worth noting, dying like the thief on the cross did as ultimately becoming a believer is maybe the worst way to do it. Because ultimately, you don't want to be the person who on your deathbed become a believer. You don't want to wait till you are on your deathbed to realize you messed up and it's now time to give your life to God. God will have mercy on whom he has mercy like he had mercy on the thief. But yet it would have been much better for the thief to have not been a thief and to live a life from beginning to end, glorifying God like the likes of someone like John the Baptist or Peter or John, whom even as men who had many faults and made many mistakes themselves, lived a fulfilling life with powerful ministries of God. Ultimately, brothers and sisters, the reality is, is that heaven will not look the same for everyone. And this is a difficult pill to swallow. But this is what the Bible teaches, that there is a difference. Jesus said himself in Revelation 22, verse 12, Behold, I am coming soon, bringing my recompense with me to repay each to what he has done. Of course, we know that eternal life is rewarded for those in him and eternal death for those who are not in him. But there is a deeper aspect to this, too, for those who are within him. We read, for example, in Matthew chapter five about how there is a greater and a lesser in the heavens. We read in verse 18, I say to you truly until heaven and earth pass away, not an odor or a jar will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Whoever relaxes one of the least of the commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. We're reading that God is saying that there will be a greatest and a least in the kingdom of heaven. And one of the factors that is going to be determining that is that whether you were someone who both did and taught the law of God, the Torah, the, what is what Yeshua 
read from every Sabbath as he went into the synagogues, whether you were someone who was for it or someone who taught against it and you pull people away from it, that person would be called least in the kingdom of heaven, perhaps still saved, but least in the kingdom of heaven. And so we see that there is this, there's more to our salvation than just saying, Jesus, save me. You see, there is something deeper that that is the simplicity of the gospel. But there is something deeper that God calls us into. And that is to walk as Yeshua, Jesus walked, to be like he was, to be used in power of the Holy Spirit. The reason he ascended to send the Holy Spirit to be used in that powerfully. We don't want to think, yeah, but the gospel is so simple. Let me live my best life now. I'll make sure I'm ready on the day I die on my deathbed. And, you know, I'll, I'll be all right. That is the error of the world. The world would like you to believe it's okay to be a lukewarm, gummy bear Christian going to church every Sunday, but death, dead religion inside. It's okay to be that because you're saved. And that's all Jesus wants from you. No. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. And who one who is not willing to do that is not worthy to be my disciple, is what he said. If had the thief on the cross, his circumstances been different. Had he been someone who a week before his death on that cross gave his life to Christ, he would have a great responsibility to live radically different from the way he used to. Otherwise, that faith would not be genuine. And so we know now know that it is not just by a profession of faith that we are saved, but faith without works is dead. And if you have true faith, you will have true evidence of that faith manifested in good works, following after Yeshua Jesus as your savior. And one last verse that I'll just read for you on this as we end off is Matthew 16, 27. For the Son of Man is going to come with his angels and the glory of his Father. And then he will repay each person according to what he has done. The thief will be repaid according to what he has done. You will be repaid according to what you have done. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be a Peter or a John the Baptist than a thief on the cross. And so, brothers and sisters, today is the day to give your life to God like never before. Today is a day he calls you out of lukewarm Christianity to become on fire for him and lead a meaningful life as a disciple of Christ. Father, I pray, Lord, for everyone listening right now, Lord, you would convict their hearts of their sin, your righteousness and judgment. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would lead us into your righteousness so that we can come close to you and sit close to you at that table when we are with you in the kingdom. We pray all this in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Amen. If this has blessed you, subscribe to this channel for more videos just like this one. Like this video, please. It helps out the YouTube algorithm to push this video up. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Many blessings and shalom.